Math facts. Sounds boring, right? Two plus two is four, two times five is 10, but our kids need to know these facts fast and they need to know them cold. Why? Because as their math begins to become more complicated, they don't have time to be counting on their fingers or multiplying in their head. They need to know these so that they can move on. In our house, I try to take at least 10 to 15 minutes every single day where we only work on math facts. Now with my son, he went to private school for three years where they did Saxon math. Part of Saxon math has math drills as part of it and they are timed math drills. My son loves the timed math drills, so handing him worksheets was fine. He loved it. He loved timing himself. He loved seeing if he could beat it. But by the time I had my second child ready to do her addition facts, that did not work for her personality at all. And I realized she really did not know her addition facts very well. And handing her the worksheets, mm -mm. she hated that and we needed some other fun way to drill these. I came up with some creative ways where I started teaching her her addition facts and I made it fun for her. We've just kind of continued on the fun math drills through my third child. So I'm going to present to you all kinds of different ideas. I'm going to explain some of the rules to some of the games that we play. Not all the rules or this video would be a very, very long video. There are tons of ideas out there. Just look on Pinterest. There are tons of websites out there dedicated to drilling the math facts. If you wanna do this in a way other than just handing your child a worksheet to work through, you can. My name is Rachel and I'm a homeschooling mom to three kiddos age eight up to 15. So I have been homeschooling for seven years now and I have learned quite a bit through the years and that is all the things that I share on this channel. Mostly homeschooling stuff, occasionally things about motherhood and all from a Christian perspective. Okay, so one of the reasons why I make sure to plan 10 to 15 minutes in our school day is because not every curriculum is like Saxon where they prompt you to practice these drills. When my middle child, when I realized that she was not doing well with her math facts for addition and subtraction, we were using Singapore math, and I don't use the Singapore math teacher's manual. And I figure I can make it through fifth grade math without a teacher's manual. That's just me. So I don't know if the teacher's manual might prompt you to drill your student, but I know the textbook did not. So I realized I gotta add this in myself. Now that child uses teaching textbooks. I also don't think teaching textbooks prompts you to drill the math facts. We have to do this separately to just make sure that we're getting faster. If you're at a point in your curriculum where you really feel like your child is struggling, pause the curriculum. That is exactly what I did with my middle child when I realized, wow, she doesn't even really know her tens very well. I paused all math stuff and all we did was math drills for those weeks. And I got a lot of new ideas that week. I'm gonna share some of them with you. So as I go through these ideas, I'm gonna start out with the basics, like tens, because when you're teaching your child to count, tens is a very common thing that you want them to understand that if they see four to get to 10, they need another six. Or if they see seven, they need a three to get to the 10. They should kind of know those pairs Hold also. When my kids were kindergarten and younger ages, one of the very first things I introduced them to was an abacus. This can entertain your toddler, right? Just sliding the beads, but also you could challenge your kid because there's 10 on each thing. One plus nine is 10, two plus eight, three plus seven. So they can learn their tens this way. I also found, I think I found these on Pinterest. I can't like give this to you because this thing is so old, I've had this forever, but I found abacus patterns and I laminated them. So if you have a young young, like a preschooler, they could totally, in a kindergarten, I mean any age really, make these patterns on the abacus, but they're also learning counting and grouping together in that way. The other thing that I think is kind of a must have for learning your tens 
I've talked about this before in some of my math videos. This thing was probably my most used tool for kindergarten and first grade math because the thing that I love about it is they these things are foam and they have two colors. So depending on what you're doing, they always have a visual representation here of five and five is 10. So if there's one away, they know they, they are seeing five and four and then nine and one. So they don't even realize that they're kind of learning these groupings for their tens. But this thing was awesome for adding, for adding, you know, more than 10. Like so we only need two to make another 10. So you're starting with 10 plus eight, so 18. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna borrow from the fives. The five, so that you can do what? Make another 10. Make another 10. So, 23. Yay, good job. But these kinds of practicing your tens, you can find these kind of worksheets even for your little one all over the place. I had a bunch of worksheets that I would slide into our dry erase mat. When I knew that my middle child was struggling with her math facts, I bought this game. It's called the Tiny polka dot game i'm going to show it to you here so this game there's lots of things you can do with here they give you game ideas but you could also make up your own depending on what you're working on with your child i'm not going to go through all of these variations but they even give you age so age recommendations so for three and up is just matching three and three so they give you all of these cards I also have that game, which is about prime numbers and is a little bit more challenging math, but I didn't put it in this video, but we do have it. It's another math game. So you have cards with one through 10 in various forms. So this one, it's like dice, except for it's also got a set of eight here. This one is the tens units, the abstract number, this card is a little bit more complex because you can see they're varied, but they also have two different colors here. So you are also in your head, you're seeing four and three. So you know this card has seven. These have different shapes on them, but you might see the big two and then five. So this card has seven. And then cards that have the numbers in a circle. Okay, so you have all these different variations of cards. The games tells you which sets you need. So this one, you only need these sets. You're working on your tens and it's for age three and up, just matching the number on the back. Another three-year-old game. Okay, I'm gonna skip down here. So this is for age five and it's called dot ten. So you're trying to match to equal ten. So this is what I started with when I realized my second grader needed help. So this tens unit here is a four, so she needed to find the six. You could even do this like a match game, so you could flip them over and where, she need, where they need to find a pair of each, or you could like have this be the drawing pile and this be flipped over so it's kind of a memory game where you're trying to match. There's all kinds of different ways that you could do this. Pumpkin pyramid where you've got a difference here. So the difference between nine and five is four. That's for age seven and up. Pyramid puzzle. This game is just really cool for whatever it is you're struggling with. It's just a fun way. 15, so here you're trying to get to 15. And it tells you here, for the first game, play with purple. So purple and red. So this set, it tells you which sets you need. And then 15s, go fish. So I just think this one is really neat. And I love that this one is two different colors. So even in their head, it kind of reminds me of this one where I'm seeing right here a five and a two. I know this whole thing here equals 10, but I'm seeing five and two, so I know this is seven. I'm also seeing seven and then a minus three, so I know 10 is three and seven. This is such a fundamental of math that your kids need to learn first. So just many different ways you can do this. This game is awesome for that. Another great game for practicing, adding, 
the lower numbers is this game called this game called shut the box so easy to learn you don't even feel like you're practicing math for this game you would have one player on this side with their numbers whoops with their numbers flipped up and one player on the other side or you know four players if you're playing with four they have these little numbers on hinges numbering one through ten so what they would do is you when it's your turn you roll the dice and you roll until you cannot roll anymore so two plus one is three so I could put down my three or I could put down two and one whatever is going to equal that I'm going to put down my three and you just keep rolling till you can't roll anymore four times or four plus two is six Okay, so I rolled a nine and I only have a five and a seven left, so I can't do anything. So then it's the other person's turn and whoever has the lowest number left wins the game. So I play this with my little one and we just have fun. It's quick, it's easy to play, and it's fun when you can get them all, all down. This game I got from Amazon and I will link it below. There are all kinds of fun card games out there for practicing fast this box is like super destroyed but i got this at a garage sale or at that thrift store that i like to go to but it's basically war with addition facts so you're flipping your cards over one flips over you know the two plus two card the other one flips over six plus one and then whoever they have to shout out what their answers are and whoever has the biggest number gets to collect the cards just like the regular war game but they're practicing their math facts I'm sure things like this they also have for multiplication. Most of those types of games they would. So like for multiplication, I'll talk more about this later, but we have these triangular number bond cards. I also have a set for addition for this. This is another game we've played called I Knew That. It's This one is for addition. I know that they have it also for subtraction and multiplication will demonstrate. It's kind of like, um, like a gin rummy type style where you have the two piles of cards and you look at the addition fact and if you happen to have the solution card then you can make a pair and your goal is to get rid of all of your blue solution cards. If the addition fact that's facing up you do not have a solution for then you draw a new solution card. So again the goal is to get rid of all your cards but you're constantly doing the addition facts. So if you have a child who struggles with just the numbers, the abstract nature of math, this was the book that I read to my girls. So this book, what it is, is it assigns every single number a character. So for example, the three is the three B, the four is the four door, the five is the five that drives, and so on and so forth. And then for every single math fact that there is, so this one is three plus five equals eight, there is the characters in here five and three and then the eight is the eight gate but there's a story that involves all three of their numbers three and five the five that drives followed the three b to go through the eight gate it's amazing you know children are like sponges i just read these stories to my daughters and they remembered every single story whenever i would ask them for these math facts. Now my daughters also, they weren't the type that had trouble with the numbers, but they did enjoy these stories and they did help them every once in a while. This book does come with an addition, the fun way workbook also, if you wanted to do this. I got this used, so that's why like I have it, but it's not used because we ended up not really needing it. I know for a fact that they also have multiplication the fun way. So if this was something that you think would benefit your child, I think I probably got this off of thrift books or Amazon and you know, maybe I'll be selling it soon. So if somebody would like to buy it, let me know. This book, Quick Flip Arithmetic. This is just all kinds of math games that are about using a deck of cards to play different games to practice your math facts. 
I'm not going to go through all these games, but there is a ton of games in here. So when your kids are playing games, they are not thinking that they're actually learning or doing math. So if you have a child that doesn't like math, I just highly recommend getting a book like this or even this one, Mega Fun Card Games. For This says for grades three to five. There are all kinds of books. Like I have this book also, this Kaleidoscope Math that has math problems and then depending on what the answer is, you color in. So you're seeing like what color designs you have. So here's an example of a game here. So it's called the Equation Challenge. So player number one chooses a number between 20 and 100 and then they, the other player draws seven cards. And with those seven cards, they have to, using the order of operations, figure out how they can use their cards to equal the number. So say player one chooses number 59. They put their cards, they can use all of the operations, put them in order, and figure out if they can get to the number 59. And they get points for every card that they use after five. So they get to draw seven cards. If they can figure out how to do it with all seven cards, then they would get two points and so on and so forth. And we played similar games like that when we did Classical Conversations because in the Essentials class for Classical Conversations, part of Essentials, it was grammar and writing, but then they also did a half an hour of math drills every single class where we just played these games. So one of the games that we frequently played was, actually you could do so much with this deck of cards, so many different games you can do with this and dice. Like seriously, you guys, there's so many ideas out there. We would have students kind of face off against each other. They would flip the card and if we said multiply, whoever multiplied and got the correct product, they would get both cards. 36. Oh, 32. I was so close. Seven okay. times two. <laughs> Why is she so good at this? 24. No. 20, 20. 20. Yay! Maybe sometimes we would just do adding. We would say like the jack was worth 11, the queen 12, the king 13. Maybe you would make the ace one or maybe you would make the ace 14, because in classical conversations, they drilled all the way up to the 15s. My daughters and I use these all the time. So this is the classic way to drill, like with flashcards, but here's how I make it fun. First, I have this timer. This timer is awesome. You guys need this timer. I use this all the time. So if, so like, let's say I want the time for one minute. I Like I use this for the good and the beautiful language arts because my Younger one has timed like reading drills too, so this is used frequently for that. But if you want a time for one minute, you turn it on the bottom, but you have one minute facing up and it's going to start counting down and it's gonna beep when it gets to one minute. Same thing with three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, and then I have one that even has an hour on it. So I will set the timer usually for five minutes for my daughters. Sometimes I will drill them on their own and sometimes they will compete against each other for how many cards they can get. So with these number bond cards, eight times three is 24. So if we're practicing multiplication, I will cover the top part. Sometimes I'll practice division though, and I just cover this. So then they'll say 24 divided by three is eight. But here's the thing, five minutes, if they're competing against each other, usually or if I have my little one do it on her own. I would say the cards that they collect right now, maybe in the 20-ish range, so I give them Skittles. So 20 Skittles isn't a whole lot, but this makes drilling the math facts super fun for them because mid-morning snack, a little handful of Skittles, what kid isn't gonna be motivated by that? Now, I do still have worksheets for one minute math drills, this is for grades two to three. It's just the multiplication and some practice charts. I actually, I just don't use this very much. My younger daughters prefer the games. My son would have loved these sorts of math drills. So if you do have a student who likes worksheets and who likes these sorts of drills, I printed off these from worksheetfun.com practicing all 
of the multiplication through 12. And they have all kinds of stuff for addition also. This one is from mathdrills.com. So this is a blank addition, zero plus zero, you know, all the way up to nine plus nine. That one takes quite a bit to fill out. And then they have some five minute math frenzies where now they're mixing it up, two plus one, so the child really has to think about this. Two plus five is seven, two plus eight. So I've used these, especially like if we're on the go or something, I wanna put these in a clipboard just to mix it up. This is from, this is from one of my workbooks actually that I have. I have books like these, Dazzling Math Designs. I think that's from here where they're figuring out the answer and then they're drawing a line and you can imagine it's gonna be one of those, you know, like this. Child, they might enjoy this. This one's a coloring one. So this one is from Kaleidoscope Math Book. So the math problem, depending on what the answer is, is what they're coloring. So seeing what the design ends up being. If the answers are between 25 and 50, color it blue. Also from the mathdrills.com, this is what my son always did. So I printed out math facts to 144. There's all kinds of variations. This one is E, this one is A. So you can see it starts off differently. That way they can't just memorize what it is. And I think I would give him five minutes to work on that. It's 100 problems. I printed off a bunch that even mixed it up. Sometimes it was adding and subtracting, sometimes it was division. My son was perfectly fine doing all of these all of the time. So if you have a child that likes to be timed and just wants to beat themselves, also mathaids.com. So there's three websites I just gave you, Math Drills, Math Aids, and Worksheets worksheetfun.com. Let's see, in my math binder, I pulled this somewhere from Pinterest. It's just a little monster math game where you roll the dice and multiply them and you're trying to get across or down. This says to get four in a row, but you know, depending on what you wanna work on, you might say we wanna get a whole row or you know, you can do whatever you want with it, but you're just rolling two dice, multiplying them together, and putting a game piece down. All right, in classical conversations, one of the very common games we would play would be called Board Slam. And keep in mind, for the Essentials class there, we're playing with fourth through sixth grade. With Board Slam, you have three dice. The teacher rolls the three dice. Let's say she rolls a two and a three and a four. Then the class would go around and they would come up with some sort of mathematical equation using all of these numbers. They have to use all three. And their goal is to have their answers knock out all 36 numbers. Now this game is also called Number Knockout and it's like a national game where you can go to a competition and do it. But this is the same principle. I just happen to have these that say Board Slam already printed out. So you really can knock out all 36 numbers with these numbers. You want me to prove it to you?
So the kids aren't necessarily going to go in the order that I just did. I just did it to kind of show you guys how it is possible. And one of the greatest tools is that to the zero power, no matter what number it is, to the zero power is going to always make that number equal one. And that is a powerful trick here. Most of the dice combinations you can clear the board with. There's probably like if you rolled a one, that's not a very good combo to have. Knowing all of those exponents, I mean the kids will learn that stuff really fast just in order to clear the board. Most of the time when you play that game, they're gonna start out with the simple like two plus three plus four equals nine. They're gonna start out with those easy things, but they're constantly like on their little boards like trying to figure out how to knock out another number. I just happen to be a math person. I know how to do it in a uh, sequential order like that. But it's a fun game to play with your kids. Maybe take turns. That's how we did it in classical conversations. We took turns. We went around the room and let everybody d um, knock out a number first. And then once people were stumped, then it was you know whoever raised their hand and had something. But we always tried to knock out the board together. It's a great learning game. Another thing that we used to do in classical conversations, and you could do this at home, is we would have all kinds of dice. So you could do this with just three dice, or you could throw in a 12-sided dice. Um, let's see, this is a 20-sided dice. So depending, depending on how complicated you want to get with your student, but we would play relay games with these where the moms would be kind of on the other end. So if you had multiple children, you could still do this, have a relay game, and you would kind of mix up the dice. And you might say, okay, we're going to add them all this time and figure out what they're going to do in between. Um, if I was doing this at home, I might have my daughters take turns adding what's on the dice, and then, you know, maybe they have to do 10 push-ups in between before they come back or they have to hop on one foot until the other person gets the number and take turns tag teaming like that. But you could have them add the dice. You could say add two, multiply one. And so whatever the combo is, whatever the combo is, they could choose whatever they want. So they could say, okay, I'm gonna add four plus six, which is 10 times three is 30. And that's how they would have to tell it to you you could say multiply all of the dice. So four times six is 24 times three. I mean, that one could be very complicated depending on how advanced your student is. But you can do all kinds of stuff with the dice. And like I said, you could add a 12-sided dice in there. If you did the 12-sided, you could just do two of them and whatever it lands on. You know, so if you landed on a 12, and a five, they would have to know, well, that's 60. I mean, those are math facts that they should know. So I'm not gonna explain this game, except to say that this is a game that you kind of have to know your multiples of two, four, and six in order to play it. I will link, anything that I can link below, I will link below. I got this one on Amazon, but it's a math game. This is another kind of fun game, family game, that all my kids like to play, but it's got some sneaky math in there because you're trying to get your ending total to 21, and so you draw cards and you keep a running total, so that one says plus one, plus one, but there's some plus fives in there. And there's also some negative numbers, but if you draw a negative number, your turn ends and you have to wait till it comes back around to you. But your goal is like you have to end exactly on 21. So if you draw, if you're on 20 and you draw a plus five, well now you're 25. So now you need to draw a negative number, 24. So you're constantly adding danger noodles is what it's called because if you get draw one of these cards you lose all of your cards but it's just kind of a fun little game that's got some sneaky math in there and then I've mentioned multiple times about the extra math app we also use that one quite frequently and you as a parent can adjust it to whether you want it to start from the beginning with math and then once they master it like the game will 
the app will progress them along. But the extra math app is something that I can easily say, go do your extra math. And it's something we can easily take in the car with us since it's on the iPad. And then I've also mentioned classical conversations, memory work songs, the math skip counting songs. That is really how my daughter has learned most of her multiplication. They are such fun songs to learn. Skip counting the twos. Such catchy songs. So like the threes is to the tune of Jingle Bells. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, thirty, thirty-three, thirty-six, thirty-nine, forty-two, and forty-five, because forty-five is fifteen times three. So like I said, classical conversations teaches them multiples all the way up to fifteen. So they are two familiar tunes. And that's what my daughter is constantly like reminding herself in her head. The Classical Conversations math songs, I believe you can purchase them from iTunes or wherever you might buy MP3s. You might just buy one of their whole cycles of memory work because honestly, like all the math songs are the same for every single cycle. They also teach them three squared, four squared, five squared. They teach them all that up to 15 squared and they do the cubes all the way up to 15 cubes. And then they also have the math memorization for like units of measurement, basic math rules for algebra. So it's just beneficial all around. All around. I would get one of those classical conversation memory work cycles and then you can just have like the history and the science memory work on there as well, which is just a bonus because those history songs my girls love also. For more homeschooling tips, check out this video. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you and I'll see you next time. Bye.